Um, let's move on. That it would accelerate house building may have been one claim made in the budget, but will it help create more affordable homes? And what's preventing more being built already? Well, some say that one of the problems is the coalition's own recent loosening of the planning rules, which critics argue is allowing developers to avoid their community obligations. Andrew Cryan reports. When a property developer wants to build homes, first they need planning permission from the council. But this normally comes with strings attached. The council will demand affordable housing or some other contribution to the local area, like a new school or extra police. But after the crash, construction came to a near standstill and the government introduced new rules designed to get things going again. The obligations on developers now had to pass a viability test. If the project couldn't make money, it didn't have to provide the extras. So now, if you're a developer worried that your project isn't going to generate the profits you want, you might want to see someone like Section 106 Management, who carry out so-called viability assessments. Their website carries a list of case studies where they've helped cut the number of affordable homes in London. Local authorities all have planning policies which require a particular amount of affordable housing. Each of those policies is subject to a test of viability. And that's our main business, is to look at how viable the project is. But increasingly, questions are being asked about the transparency of some viability reports. This is Greenwich Peninsula, one of London's biggest housing schemes. A few years ago, the developers were given permission to cut the number of affordable homes by nearly 500 units, just over a third of the total. But the valuation was deemed too commercially sensitive for the figures to be released not just to the public, but the councillors on the planning committee who had to sign off on the decision. But just last month, a judge ruled that the information should be made public after a case was brought by local residents. Despite numerous requests from councillors, they are not able to see the viability reports. And so the councillors who actually make the decision, the planning decision, they have to rely on reports by the officers. So there, there is an issue there in terms of um, the openness and transparency of the evidence being provided firstly to the decision makers, the councillors, but also to the wider community. Now, the government say they're all in favour of greater transparency and they're looking at changing the rules to favour the release of information. But that's not enough to please everybody. Questions too about the substance of some of the numbers which developers are giving to councils. Here at the Shell Centre on the South Bank, the Canary Wharf Group and the Qatari government are set to build new residential towers. The viability assessment agreed with by the council put the value at £1,330 per square foot. But at the same time, investors were being told the land would be worth £1,641 per square foot on completion. Under the rules, that's all fine, as the latter is based on a projection, while the viability assessments have to be based on current values. The developers did tell us that there is a mechanism in this scheme where the contribution to the council can be topped off if the value spikes before completion. In fact, viability as a concept is coming under increasing pressure. In Hammersmith and Fulham, Labour took control of the council last year and have made a point of talking tough with developers in a way they say other boroughs aren't. Most of the developers we've met in our first uh, 10 months in office, when I've put it to them that there's only one answer to the viability assessments, which is you take them and stick them in the bin. They claim to have clawed back millions for local residents. But what you actually see at the moment is the great London rip-off and it's the people of London who are being ripped off because they're losing out on affordable houses, they're losing out on other infrastructure like police numbers and uh, I'm pleased that we've had 10 months where we've been able to correct that and win over £50 million of extra funding from the very same developers who thought they'd signed a deal with the Conservative administration. Increasingly, the government's rules on viability are under scrutiny, but questions are also being asked about whether London's borrowers could be getting better value for residents out of the capital's booming property market. Well, joining us now to uh, help us with this is Bob Colnut, an expert in planning issues from the University of Northampton and someone who's worked in um, local government as well um, for a long time. Welcome to you. Um, one thing first, can councils, do councils have to accept what viability assessments are, take, uh, are saying or can they still reject them and say no, we want more affordable housing or we won't, uh, or we're, we won't give you planning permission? Well, they have to agree to a viability assessment but they don't have to agree to the viability assessment that's given to them by their developer. And in fact, often they do uh, do their own assessments. But our concern is that these assessments done by the local authorities are just 
do not interrogate sufficiently rigorously what the developers put forward. They tend to capitulate very, very quickly, and the developers run rings around them. And why so is that? They just simply don't have to accept this stuff. Why? Because it's just a kind of unfair... It's just a question of money, is it, the, the planning teams they have? The... Um, partly because lack of skill. Package, partly because lack of guts, not actually fighting. Um, partly it's because they don't uh, have... They're, they're not sufficiently confident about their own policies to actually push these things forward. But overshadowing it all is the national planning policy guidance, which says that these viability assessments must produce a result which is, you know, kind of basically fair to the developers and to the landowners. And once you put them in the position of uh, deciding really what, what sort of level of affordable housing should take place, then the local authority is always on the back foot. So uh, it's, it's, not, it's not possible, presumably, to put any kind of sense of a figure or, how, or to show how extensive um, this, the impact of this is, is it? I mean, in terms of how, how, how much less affordable housing are we getting than we should be getting? Yes, well, for example, in the Greenwich Peninsula, there was a loss of 527 well, affordable housing units. Yeah. In the Haygate, there's a loss of 303 affordable housing units as a result of viability assessment. We calculate that as a loss of 250 million to the public purse. Or it's a, a decision being made by the council, a Labour-run council in Greenwich, maybe with the mayor as a, at the mayor certainly as a strategic planning authority, yeah. deciding well, we want to get this viable and up and running and the homes delivered now, and we don't want to get bogged down in discussions about viability around the margins. Well, this is not on the margins. This is absolutely central. This is hundreds of units going down, going down the drain because they haven't called upon the right kind of advice to rigorously interrogate these viability assessment models. And these models are riddled with problems uh, because they're very subjective, there's no agreed methodology. Presumably you will accept that, or uh, you will think that the, the, the Greenwich judgment, though, uh, Greenwich judgment um, <laughs> echoes another one, but the judgment that, that, that people are allowed to, that the public uh, and residents and councils will be able to see the details of this viability uh, study, that is quite a breakthrough, isn't it? That is, but of course it's after the fact. We had to fight that battle after the planning consent was given. This is not a way of being able to review the planning consent, unfortunately. This is a kind of pyrrhic victory. Mm -hmm. All we've done is establish the principle, at least in Greenwich, that um, the viability assessment should be fully revealed to the general public. But you're not saying, you can't, and you can't say, and we wouldn't allow you to say or make the case that it was fraudulent in relation to that development. That's for sure. I mean, in terms of a, uh, that development, you can't possibly say that. Well, no. We're not able to reject that. We're, we're not able to assess that dispassionately here. All we can say is that a council has considered it. It's been looked at by the, uh, uh, the mayor. We will eventually get to see the details of a viability yes. study, and that is progress. Can I just bring um, Meg Hillier in here at the stage? Because I know that a council very near yours, of the Islington, will have, say, for instance, rejected the viability studies on a big development like Mount Pleasant. Um, so you yeah, can, it can be done. They just need to, as Bob says, you know, need to st start putting some effort into it. Yeah, I think one of the big challenges is, as Bob says, the developers have got a lot of resource and council planning officers have a big job ahead of them. There's, and we're seeing cuts coming down the line, you know, very fast and furious to local authorities. And planning departments are likely to be in that firing line. And so, you know, you hear of developers who are paid bonuses for arguing mm. down the number mm. of affordable units uh, in any development. And they can just tie up hours, days and days, or nearly a year of council officers' time doing that. And in the end, the council's, I guess, you know, they're kind of just under the cosh. I want to bring, I want to bring Nick Hurd in here, though, because cause you're you know, representing the coalition, you know, so to speak, today. I mean, mm. what... Uh, do you accept this, or do you, do you find that this is acceptable, that apparently, I mean, this point, possibly, that it looks like developers are, are continuing to run ring round, rings no, around local authorities? If, if they're gaming the system under, under a source poorly-led planning departments, then that's a big problem, because what we're talking about here is probably one of the biggest single challenges facing the future of London, which is our ability mm. to build uh, affordable, affordable homes. homes. Now, we don't have, I'm glad to say, we don't have a problem in Hillingdon because we've got a very well-run planning department. We're on track in terms of homes. We haven't had this problem. Right, but but the key, the key for me, Tim, is, is transparency. Yeah. You know, people, uh, if people are gaming the system, if, if, this, if this is true, then transparency is the best disinfectant yeah. to wash it out. Well, people access it, 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 it looks pretty unarguable, doesn't it, that as it becomes more sophisticated, and these are very, very, you know, mm. some of these companies, very uh, reputable companies, looking in detail and are able to say these, these developments are not commercially viable at the moment mm. with as, with as yes. much affordable Sorry, housing. Sorry, they make less profit. They do, but if you can't challenge them, if a local authority isn't able to challenge it, it must be seen um, to stand yeah. but do you do you subscribe to the view that it is really important just to get building going and we shouldn't get too um, bogged down in affordability I think it's an absolute political priority if the evidence uh, reinforces the view that there is a problem here 
uh, through transparency, if we can prove there's a genuine problem across the capital of, of developers gaming the system, then it will require political attention. We'll need review because this matter, matter, this issue matters probably more than anything else in terms of the future of London. So you would, our to ability to bring housing within affordable reach. Of so key there are lots of them being done. There being the London skyline being transformed at the moment. You would have no doubt. You think viability studies, so we can all see the calculations are going in, should be public. I'm, I'm a strong believer in transparent yeah. full stop. That way, it should be worth saying that in terms of affordable housing, I understand there's more affordable housing being built in London this financial year than in any year since 1981. So there, there's good news out there. But if there is a structural problem like this that Bob has highlighted, then we need to flush it out, and transparency is the best way. I, of I think there's an issue, if I, if I can but say, is the viability idea. assessment, even if it was transparent, is highly problematic, because mm. what it leads to is the unravelling of local plans. Agreed local plans under, with, with full consultation, statutory plans, a developer can come along and produce a viability statement. Let's just say it actually is completely transparent. They may well be able to kind of completely unpick a local plan on the but basis of the viability of that scheme. Affordable homes They're not genuinely be right. affordable. Mm. That's really, really important. Okay. Um, Bob Colnock, thanks very much indeed. Now, the rumour is tumbleweed has been.